Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One, and welcome to Boots on the Ground. I appreciate all the reports being sent in. Um, a lot of people say, well, it's depressing to hear all this. I understand that. But to take it some positive out of this, at least uh, because of a lot of people willing to send reports in, we're finding out about shortages, we're finding out about other problems in the logistical uh, supply line that we can actually uh, do something about. We can either go buy some stuff that we need to stock up on it, uh, or we can tell people, hey, this is going to probably be shortage in our area. So look at the positive side. It doesn't matter. It's bad news. It's happening. Uh, at least when you know something's happening this bad, you can react to it and you can get ahead of it and be proactive. So that's what I see as positive. So that's why I like them. Um, it helps me prepare properly and use my money and time wisely. Let's get right into it. Last night I went to my local Kroger for a few things and noticed that half of the gas pumps with caution tapes around them. I was going to get some gas, but it was packed because of the pumps uh, that were down. So I just got a Coke and asked why the pumps were shut, and they would not tell me. And this is in Canton, Georgia. Uh, this morning I stopped at another gas station and to pay at the pump was offline so I had to go inside and use my card and that worked. Uh, he was also in another place in Georgia. Just really thought both were odd. This person, I've been buying M&Ms for years. They were $10 two years ago for the bag. Past spring, it was $13. Yesterday, $15.48 at my local Costco. This person, uh, very important, especially for new preppers. Uh, right now, Amazon is having a clearance on Augustine Farm number 10 cans with discounts as much as 6% off. Um, so they wanted people to know. I'll put a link in there. Uh, just make sure you're getting a good deal, not that they just marked the price up and then marked it down and, and took a bunch off. So compare it to like Walmart or other places. Um, my wife and I decided to try some old cans to see how they held up. We found in our prep some canned beef ravioli that I had best buy dates of 2010. We opened six cans over the next week and found five of the six to be edible. The six can did look right, so we didn't eat it. It may have tasted fine, but we didn't risk it. Good, because food poisoning is nothing to laugh at. So even though it was 12 years past Best Buy date, it was still tasty. Uh, you are spot on with comments about giving to the local food bank. When we go to town uh, monthly for supplies, we always pick up a few extras to provide to our local community food bank. We know that these supplies are going to people in need that way. This is from our MK reporter in Australia. Uh, bread shortage in New South Wales, and this was because there was a large bread factory uh, that burnt to the ground. So, uh, just another processing facility or food processing facility uh, that has met its match. And this is happening worldwide, just not in the United States. This is from a commercial kitchen tech. He's provided a lot of information. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he was working at Outback last Friday and heard the chef telling uh, all the wait staff to get rid of the baked potatoes. Can't have them uh, until further notice. Um, they were told by their vendor that they're having issues finding them, and that is true. Potatoes are a shortage. Later that day, I was at Longhorn and spoke with a store manager, and they're in the same boat trying to find potatoes. Um, I haven't heard of a potato shortage, but when companies as large as you know Longhorns and Outback and the, the big companies uh, who have hundreds of vendors are struggling to find something, then there is a problem. He also said a shout out to Bear Independent. Bear Independence uh, is a YouTube channel. So yes, Bear Independence is a great resource. I'll put a link to Bear's uh, channel. He also does a lot of charity work and he also provides medical supplies. So go check Bear out. Um, the Atlantic Food Bank has a weekly fresh vegetable food distribution each week at the local library. This is the worst I've ever seen this with traffic. It's 30 minutes before distribution is due to start and the entire parking lot is full and cars are parked in the streets. Uh, this person said, this past week, my family and I did a 72-hour bug out slash end of summer camping trip to a state park about a mile away. We lucked out with the weather, nice and cool with overcast skies for all three days. A couple of things I noted, a lot of truck traffic both eastbound and westbound on I-80. I stopped by the local Walmart for additional white gas cylinders and what they had in stock looked like they were recovered from a shipwreck. The cans were dented and rusted in spots. Uh, the kid working simply shrugged his shoulders. On a humorous note, redundancy is key. Our can opener broke, and the only thing that saved us was my old P38 can opener for my time in the service. Um, you best believe that 
dozens of these along with the large size ones were ordered as soon as we got home um, along with extra fire starter matches and steel so yes that p38 those things are awesome u.s cotton prices are continue to surge um, and this is des definitely related to the uh, mega drought that is killing Texas and the farmland down there. Uh, I saw pictures of the cotton fields, and they were not cotton fields. They were like a desert field with little sticks sticking out of them, out of the ground. So uh, definitely the futures on the cotton market has exploded. It's up like 21% this month alone. So expect to pay more for your clothing. <coughs> In listening to yesterday's Boots on the Ground, I was surprised when I heard that one with the grocery stores or other stores rearranging items to make them appear less depleted. Because I went to our Kroger grocery in a fairly affluent sub suburbs just north of Columbus, Ohio, before work yesterday morning and was surprised to see one of the two whole walls of produce empty. So I asked and they told me they were changing the layout of the produce section. They said many of the items have been moved to the center shelves between the two large walls of produce. There was produce where they indicated, but looked a lot less than normal. I also noticed Coke Zero, um, uh, other, other than cans, severely low on the Coke itself, and soft drinks, a lot of soft drinks were missing. Um, and probably because of the CO2, the cans could be missing because of the aluminum problem getting cans. Um, <clears throat> they also walked down some of the aisles, and, um, and they said this, they also had some aisles where they were using what looks like curtains with pictures of food on a shelf to cover the empty shelf space. I don't recall what product aisle it was, but one of these had a food curtain covering more than half the length of the aisle. It will be interesting to see how fast this evolves over the next few weeks. I believe that was at Kroger's. I live in a small town in the Ozarks, and on the third Wednesday of the month, there is a food pickup. People started lining up at 4.30 a.m. for pickup at 10 a.m. I'm hearing a lot more of this, uh, and just two today. Uh, food pantries, food banks are running out of food, or there are so much people coming, they're giving less food to each person, which makes sense. This is interesting. I'm trying to get a lot more information, and this pr person provided some company names for me, but I'm not going to mention those. A guy that works for a seed company in the Midwest, now he has to travel around the next month to inform customers that because of a fertilizer they used from another company, that their corn that they worked so hard to grow in the last four months will not produce any corn. This affected around 18% of their seed customers, and only 5% currently are aware of this. The only thing this corn is good for now is silage. Uh, pray these poor farmers can get uh, compensated from the fertilizer company. The seed company has the funds to help out the farmers financially, but this will only go so far. So I'm a little confused, but I don't know if it's the fertilizer problem, the seed problem, but the end result is there is a problem, and anytime we have a problem with food, uh, it's serious nowadays. This is uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, the Sam's Club on Tuesday. Two pack of eggs, uh, and these are the 18 uh, size one so it'd be like three dozen eggs was ten dollars and seventeen cents uh, my chickens have stopped laying so I don't usually buy eggs but this was a shocker yes uh, eggs prices have going up everywhere they went up at first and now I'm seeing a second little bump uh, this person was in Virginia this week and ordered the special at a small diner uh, they ordered an open roast beef sandwich uh, the waitress came back and told us they couldn't serve the roast beef and asked us to pick something else I pushed for a reason uh, and sure enough, she said it was rotten when they opened it. So bad meat. Not sure it, on why there isn't the demand. We have a discount part um, of products offered due to not being able to get raw supplies. And he's referring to the uh, PEX piping. So basically, a little bit ago, they were slammed with orders for PEX piping. That would be like the half inch, the three quarters, the one inch. Um, they use for plumbing. It's the newest, greatest thing out there now. And they were could keep up. Now, since springtime, um, the orders are not coming in. So they're um, reduced a lot of things at the plant. Um, they were having people run like eight machines at a time per person. Now they're running only two to three machines per person. They even went ahead and shut down the plant um, for 10 days 
to maybe catch up with getting some orders in. So this is the PEX. So if you need PEX, uh, hopefully it'll be available, but with them shutting down, uh, hopefully don't, we don't get a shortage. I live in suburbs of South Jersey. Uh, tree removal companies no longer leave wood behind at the residence. In years past, we would collect logs left behind and split them for winter use. Most tree companies around here charge for the actual removal of the felled trees. So many people will simply leave, have them left uh, there or left on the curb. Um, but this is not happening anymore. This year, almost all the wood is taken by the companies. In addition, the price for split firewood has skyrocketed. We purchased a couple cords two years ago for around $150 a cord. The cheapest I found it so far was $230. One nursery where we purchased from in the past is $275, and that is pickup only. You drive around, and these places have firewood stacked high, uh, higher than we've ever seen yet. They are charging crazy prices. I really hope people are busting it to get ready for winter. I know a lady whose grandson is the Coast Guard Reserve, and he has been called up. He will be trained and then go to Guap. Uh, he will go overseas. Um, if the reserves are being called up, will this create more worker shortages when these people are pulled off of their regular job? Um, this is interesting because I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it in state uh, correction officers in certain states. They don't have enough correction officers, so they call the National Guard up. I've seen it even with school teachers. Uh, I've seen it in many areas. So, you know, these people also have regular jobs outside the National Guard. So, I mean, we're just creating one problem and pushing it to another employer. So it's really not a solution. I live in Dallas in a wealthy area. We've had good supply of most items, but now almost overnight, items are hard to find. I normally do the Walmart pickup, and most of the time, I may have one or two substitutions. But last week, when I checked out, over half of my order was not available in store and had to be shipped to me. Our Kroger is starting to really show its shortages as well. One thing I noticed in the last week, Olive Garden, Olive Garden normally offers cheese on top of everyone's meal. This past week, the waitress brought it out, but offered it uh, to no one in the family. We had to ask for it, and they did not give us any of the mints when we left. Uh, our Starbucks said that they are not receiving a good portion of their orders. That's everywhere. 50-60% uh, of the, your order in lots of restaurants and a lot of things. Uh, the dentist's office was out of floss. Many restaurants are out of carbonated drinks. You can only get tea or water. This one. I work for a nationwide pet microchipping company. I help lost and found pets of all types get back home to their families. We are seeing a significant increase in abandoned pets whose owners will not claim them or even return our messages. Also a huge amount of pet surrenders to shelters and rescues in every state. The shelter workers have told me that most of the pet owners that do this are heartbroken because they either can't afford it to feed their pets or have been forced to move to cheaper housing that does not allow pets. I'm so afraid this is going to lead to more shelters having to turn to euthanize uh, animals because of lack of space and funding. If people are able, they should consider donating to the local shelters, even if it's just a bag of pet food or an old blanket. That is a good idea. A lot of reports. Uh, I've gotten reports from people here that say, I, I'm starting to the point where uh, I can't buy the good food for my animals, uh, so I've cut back. Um, it's heartbreaking. This is a frozen breakfast burrito. I think it's El Monterey. This is from Steve in Alaska. There you go, Steve. Your shout out for today. Thanks for sending this report in. They were $10 last year. Now they're $13. Um, the, you're supposed to be eight burritos in there, but there was only seven. And he's found out in his area that I guess a shipment came in. They were shorted. There was only seven uh, and not eight. Uh, they reported to the store, but the store really didn't do anything to make it right. Uh, we won't buy this brand anymore. I agree with your most recent post. It's better to let people know that the, about police presence and avail availability. Um, we just had a presentation from the county sheriff at church this past Sunday to talk to us about active shooter incidents uh, and how to prepare ourselves and our church for an event. It was very good and I highly recommend it. He told us too. He asked the question, do you know how many patrol cars are patrolling this city? And the city is about 70,000 people at any time during the day. Uh, and any time during the day, um, they told us four to six patrol cars during the peak time. 
that's for 70,000 people. Now granted, there's more than that in, in the police department because they're probably running two or three shifts. Then you have all your support people, you have detectives. Um, but if you only have four to six cars and you've got 70,000 people, that's not a good security level. During low peak times, there could be down to two, and that might be when their shift, shifts are switching, but I don't know. But four to six police cars. His point was it could take five to seven minutes or longer before help arrives at minimum. So it's prudent to devise a policy and a plan for protecting ourselves until help can get to us. And that's for all of us. All of us. We don't have to be at church. There's not that many cops out there. Keep your head on a swivel. Watch your back. Have a means to defend yourself. Uh, have a means to communicate with your loved ones at all times. I want to tell you something that happened recently in Southern California. I live in San Diego, California. My dad is 85 and lives alone about 200 miles north of me. Since my mom passed away several years ago, he hired a private local meal prep company geared towards seniors in the county to deliver him healthy, low-sodium, diabetic-friendly pre-made meals that he can heat up in the microwave. Uh, he lists the name of the company. Um, the cost was about $1,400 per month. And they provided him with 12 meals per week, two lunches, two dinners for Monday through Saturday. They delivered the meals Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, always between 11.30 to 12 p.m., like clockwork. My dad worked for the federal government for 35 years, so he is fortunate to be able to afford the higher cost of this type of service. A couple of weeks ago, his meals didn't arrive at the usual time on Monday. After it got late Monday afternoon, he just went to the drive-thru and got something to eat, figuring it's just running late or it'll be here on Tuesday. He called Tuesday morning and afternoon several times, but no answer. The delivery person never showed up on Tuesday. He tried calling Wednesday morning with no answer. He waited for Wednesday delivery, but again, no show. He was finally able to get hold of someone at the office that Wednesday afternoon. They apologized for missing the meals and said as, as of the previous Friday, they were out of business. He never got a letter or phone call or email uh, letting him know what was up. After a couple weeks of fending for himself at drive through my dad was able to get set up with another meal prep service, but now they drive 60 miles from Los Angeles to deliver him four days per week. Uh, I've been stocking up with some extra food for his pantries and other things that he can eat, so in case this company uh, has any problems delivering to him. So, luckily he's able to afford this, um, but the decency of not even giving a person a warning. This is what's wrong with society. People don't care. Uh, no responsibility. Uh, no lack or lack of empathy. These are elderly people using a service needing food. Um, this is called, I call it, or they call it the lead belt of southeast Missouri. Periodic shortages in Walmart locally pertaining to food at the local grocery stores. Prices are higher each month. Stores being rearranged to accommodate fewer choices at higher prices. Low quality produce. Um, I'm now buying from the Amish instead. Um, he has seen a lack of workers and I, he really says he can't blame them. Basically, they're not paying a lot of money. So it's if you're going to be poor, you might as well stay home and be poor. Um, we lost the glass factory this year that had been here for 40 years, hundreds of jobs gone. We lost the inbound call center that employs hundreds. Uh, almost all sit-down restaurants are gone. gone, only expensive fast food is left. Over the last 20 years, we've lost the Huffy Bicycle Factory, a clothing factory, a little tykes factory, lead mining, lead smelting, and the only thing keeping this region afloat is a state psychiatric hospital and three prisons. Without these state-funded facilities, the area would dry up and blow away. The state hospital future is in jeopardy due to mismanagement and lack of staff. It's been there for over 100 years. Business is slowing drastically, and poverty and crime continue to climb as inflation bites. Used to be a peaceful, quiet area, but drugs and poverty has taken over. Dark days in America. I don't want to leave it on this depressing tone, but yes, we are in trouble. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, we have to make a change in this country because the future is bleak, and it's not bleak for me. It is bleak for my children. It is bleak for my grandchildren, and I'm not going to go down without a fight. So... Do what you can to show kindness. Do what you can do to help the local entrepreneur. Um, there's no easy answer, but we're in it together. We need to find solutions uh, so we can all make it through. And I honestly believe we're heading for a great depression. So keep prepping, keep preparing, and pray for guidance. Thanks for watching.